Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben. I have a cold, but I don't care. I'm here to teach you some more Boogie Woogie Banjo Backup Licks. We did the first edition of this lesson a few months ago. It's been one of my most popular lessons over the last year. So I wanted to do a second edition, teach you some more of these closed Boogie Woogie Licks that are so useful in our backup and our lead playing. So we're going to learn four of them. We're going to start with that walking the dog which is a great lick, and then kind of build off of it, get into some bends. And these licks, as I mentioned, they're closed. That means we can take them anywhere. So if somebody calls out a song in B-flat, you don't have a capo, it don't matter. You can play some great backup licks with that. These work great with country music as well. Um, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, here in a moment, I'm going to ask you to come over to my home, BanjoBenClark.com. You need to do that. Join as a Gold Pick member. You can have access to this lesson, hundreds of other ones. This lesson's over 30 minutes long because we get into a lot of application, real-world playing situations. I've got the tab exactly as I played it and three different speeds of MP3 rhythm tracks that you can download. I'd be honored to have you on board. Let's jump right into Walking the Dog. Yeah. Welcome to the second edition of Boogie Woogie Banjo Backup. We're going to have a lot of fun today, y'all. We're going to learn four really cool licks that all your friends are going to admire and talk about long after the jam session. What's really cool about these licks is that they're useful in a variety of styles of songs and speeds. Depending on how fast you can work these up, you can get them pretty fast. Also, these licks are all closed. What do I mean by that? That means that I don't play any open strings when I play them, so we can take them anywhere we want to go. I just played that out of a G position, okay, over a G shape. But if I moved up two frets, I've got it in A. I've got it in B flat, B. You can carry it wherever you want. And this is, you know, how those really good banjo players play without a capo. A lot of times you see them, you wonder how they do that. Well, they've got a handle on things just like this. Let's go ahead and throw up this first line tab. The first one we're going to learn is called Walking the Dog. You've heard this lick before. I just played it for you. You hear that a lot, especially, you know, J.D. Crow's type backup. And we're going to learn that. This is a two measure lick that I'm going to give you. All of these are. We're going to talk about how we can just use one, lick, one measure from it if we want to, if we find ourselves in that situation. But we're going to start there. In the first measure of the line <coughs> It's labeled measure two, but it's the first measure. We're going to start in this G major position. Okay, Some people might call this an F position because that's how we'd make an F chord down there. But we're going to have our ring finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string. Our pinky is going to be on the fifth fret down here on the first string, so that makes an octave. And then we're going to have our index finger on the third fret, middle finger on the um, fourth fret. And what I also want you to notice is that beneath each one of these notes in those little circles, those are our pick finger indications. And we're going to have some uh, single string picking going on, so you want to pay attention to those. T is thumb, one is index, two is middle. And again, let me just play it for you slowly. So if you've never done any single string picking, what I mean by that is playing the same string more than one time in a row with different fingers, just like a flat pick would do on a mandolin or a guitar. If you've never done that, it'll take just a little while to, to learn, but I want you to take this first measure here, pause the video if you have to, and get familiar with it. And here's a couple tips I want you to remember. Don't pick your pinky up. This whole first line, we're not going to pick our pinky up. It's going to stay stuck there 
like glue on that fifth fret. So our other fingers are going to move around, but we're gonna start on that fourth string, then go up to the first, and then we're gonna play this little chromatic from third to fourth. And that's a flat three of the scale, B flat up to the major three. So it's got that little blues feel. Then come up to the second string and do three, five, then back where we came from. And then we go back and land. Pretty cool little lick. I think about it like climbing a ladder and coming back down, right? Now once we get there, in, in that second measure, I want you to stick that position, and I'm just giving you a little space filler here, and measure, it's called measure three, but it sounds like this. And now literally you could do anything you wanted there. Sometimes I think I do just um, uh, straightforward rolls and go right back into it, but I've built a little space in there with these quarter notes just to, to help you out if you're not used to this. So the first two measures there sound like this. So if you had two measures of G, this is a really useful thing for you to play. And many times whenever you're playing these bluesy licks, these boogie woogie licks, you wanna create this little swing feel if you can, if you're going slow enough. When it speeds up, it's harder to get it. But you'll wanna play this little swing feel, it sounds like this. And that takes a little practice too, especially with that single string stuff. So measures uh, four and five there on this, uh, page are the same thing. We're just going to repeat, repeat that lick. So we play that lick two times in a row. <clears throat> now when we get to measure six, I just wanted to go through this practice of, of running the one, four, and five chords so I can get you moving across the, the fretboard. So we're going to carry this whole thing up to the tenth fret. Okay, and, and this is a good time for me to express how you know when, when you can use this lick. Whenever you're in this position, whichever note your ring finger is covering, that's the lick that you're going to play. So if I go up to the 10th fret, do you know what note that is? That is a C note. So that means if I play this lick starting right here, that's going to be a C lick. In the same way when we were down here, that was a G note that we were covering. But I want you to see here in measure six and seven, Everything's the same. All I did was just raise everything, one, two, three, four, five frets, and we're up to the C chord, which is a very common move. And then we wanna practice in measure eight, going back down to the G position. So let's just play measure six through nine there. Start up here. Now shift down. We'll do it much slower later on. But measure 10, I want you to come all the way up. We're gonna jump now up to the 12th fret. We're gonna play that D chord. So guess what? The note underneath our ring finger is a D note. And then we've got two measures of G here that we're just going to kind of um, finish out this progression. And I give you this great little backup lick here that uh, doesn't really have anything to do with this boogie woogie, but it just sounds good. I'm gonna come all the way up to 17th fret with my last two fingers and it's syncopated. So I'm going to go one and two and three and four and down to 14. And with my middle finger, I'm going to play 12, 14, 11, and I'm going to choke it. So pay attention to the timing measure 13. It sounds like this one and two and three and four and. sure and wait till you pick that note before you choke it. Now let me give you a couple variations on this lick before we play it slowly together and then look at the, uh, the other licks which get to be really fun. One is um, you don't have to, uh, to play that full G shape when you get done. What you can do is do a seven shape and what, the way that I'll do that is I will bar and it looks just like an F chord on a guitar, but I'll bar the, the first two strings. So it would sound like this. It'd sound good when you're getting ready to go to a C chord. Okay, so that would be one option there. And again, you don't have to do that roll that I wrote out for you. You can do whatever you want there. You could do, um, you could do vamps if you want. And then 
move on. Okay, so it's, it's fun to take that and experiment with it. I just gave you uh, one option there. And let me, let me tell you as well, you can take that first measure and you can repeat it. So instead of you know, doing the two measure lick that we've been doing, you can simply go and move through your progression like that. You'll have to move quicker, but you can do that. Let's play it all together, this walk in the dog lick slowly, then we'll talk about um, jerking the leash, which gets to be fun, getting to some more bendy stuff.